Firstly, I'd like to welcome myself. My name is David Hawkins, and this is my Match Mover 2011 tutorial. Firstly, uh, we're going to open up Match Mover. And once it's open, first thing we have to check is that we're on the full version rather than the light version. Uh, so, first thing we need to do, because we're exporting to 3D Studio Max. Uh, we need to change some pre settings, chooses edit, then preferences and then change the 3D up axis to Z and click OK. So the first thing we have to do is load in our image sequence so that's file, load sequence uh, I've recorded some short footage uh, and extracted it as an image sequence so um, first thing we can do is Select the first one, and because I recorded it at 50 frames a second, uh, just need to change the frame rate to 50 frames a second. Uh, and you click on the details button, you'll be able to see the footage from start to finish, and that the footage is a hundred frames long. So click OK. First thing I do is close this uh, magnifier window, just to make it a bit more easier to use. In this tutorial I'm going to show you two methods of tracking, automatic and manual. So for the automatic one, uh, choose 2D tracking then automatic tracking. Uh, click on the settings button and with this window open you need to change uh, the minimum track length to the same length of what your clip is. So for this one it is 99 frames and then click run. It will then uh, track the scene and look for any key features in the scene that it can pull tracking data from. This shouldn't take long because the clip's only 100 frames long. So now it's tracked the data, it's now going to calculate in the bottom uh, where the camera is. So now we need to analyse our tracking data, so if you expand the point track uh, option and the auto track option, uh, you're then presented with a list of all the tracks that it's found in our scene. So what we have to do is pick out uh, three uh, green ones out of the list that uh, are at a natural right angle um, to assist our tracking process. So for this I'm going to choose point 14 as the origin, point 17 as the X and point 26 as the Y. So to do this um, on the coordinate systems options right click and choose the new coordinate system and then on the right hand side so we're going to change our origin to point 14 and change our distances from 14 which is the origin to 17 and so on the Y we said origin to point 26 and on the X is 17 Okay, if you click on where it says the 3D logo and then press the letter C you'll see that I've got it uh, the wrong way around so you just need to flip Y to 17 and that to 26 click apply so there you go so your Z axis points up into the sky and your axes are aligned up and uh, distances are correct. For this what I'll do is I'll change the distance to 10 uh, to get a better zoomed in angle. So the first thing we have to do now is to export our data. So it's file, export 
and for this one we'll call it paving track this will export it as a 3D Studio Sacks match script file so first thing we need to do is load up 3D Studio Max to import our match script file so first thing we have to do is choose match script run max script choose where we put it so for this one we'll call it paving track there and you'll see that it's in loaded up the point data and the virtual camera so if you zoom in or forward and back you'll see the camera move from the left to the right so the first thing we do is press C to jump to the camera view hold down ALT then B and this will change the background of what we're seeing so if we choose the original image sequence that we loaded it up and if we choose match bitmap display background ticked and animate background is ticked click OK then it will change it back to how we want it um, so first thing I do to try whether it's worked efficiently or not is to choose a draw a plane along the floor uh, from this you'll see that it's not tracked it's not got the correct uh, perspective um, so what we need to do is uh, look into manually tracking this bit of footage rather than the automatic tracking to get uh, the design because automatic tracking didn't give us what we wanted, I'm going to show you the other method, which is manual tracking. So to do this, uh, same again, load in a sequence. Again, this is a video file that's been recorded at 50 frames a second. Uh, this is a desk scene, and I've placed on the scene four, sorry, five uh, dots to assist me in tracking. So the first thing you need to do is right-click anywhere, choose New Track. And with the left click hover over and move the cursor into where the black one of the black dots is so once you've done that press F3 and this will uh, track forwards through the scene so this time it's doing it a bit slower because um, it's caching it at the same time uh, and it will process it through the 284 frames So, 60 frames left. So, first track is done. So, now we're going to add some more tracks on. So, new track, select all the black dots with the left click and then press F3. It will go quicker through because it's cached it this time. There you go, the second one. Click on. Again, F3, zoom through it. And fifth. When you're adding tracks in, if you check that if a feature appears all the way through the track that you're trying to do then uh, you may not add one onto that Again, the black area near the bottom there's also a black spots on the table which is part of the wood effect so just add a few more in so now we've got our nine tracking points that we've manually created uh, we need to then solve the camera so expand the camera option and then right click where it says camera 01 and choose the solve for camera option this will then process all the nine dots and produce anything 
so this time I uh, had more success than the automatic tracking by all of them turning green so the first thing similar to what uh, we need to do is uh, devise our XYZ so for this I, I always note it down on a bit of paper um, I'm going to use track 3 as the origin track 4 on the X direct direction and track 1 on the Y direction so as before uh, right click on coordinate system to new coordinate system so our origin is going to be track 3 change the distance to 10 for scaling issues um, track 1 and track 3 for distance um, so that means the distance between track 1 and track 3 will be uh, 10 units uh, we'll be able to see that in 3D Studio Max later so the X directory is 4 and the Y directory is number 1 so click apply So after clicking apply, we then click on the two, 3D symbol to turn. So now we're going to export to 3D Studio Max again. So file, export, desk scene, click save, open up 3D Studio Max again, uh, run the Max script. Let's test scene. Let's Alt W to go full screen. Press C to go into the camera view. Um, so to load up the movie in the background, so it's Alt B. Select your movie from scene. Uh, this is when a bit of paper is useful to note where, which files you're working with. Uh, and then again, as before, choose match pitch map and animate background and display background is selected. So click OK. So there we go. Uh, it is uh, in 3D Studio Max. We now have the tracking data all in and all lined up. So we're going to add some cylinders into the scene to um, cover up these uh, tracking markers along the floor so all I'm going to do is align the cylinders pivot point on the XYZ to it uh, the, where the marker was Take a copy of the thing and again Alt A and then align it to the XYZ pivot point of that one. And again with the bottom three down here. So now we've added on the five columns into the scene. And if we scrub through time to later on the scene, you'll see that they'll uh, match up and cover up the market points. So when we want to render it out, choose rendering, render setup. First thing we want to do is change the active time sequence to the whole length of the scene, which is 284 frames. Change the output size to HDD TV and then 1280 by 720, uh, which matches the footage 
that we saw. So then scroll down to render output, click on files, and we're going to call it desk scene. Images. Use target files um, because of this saves the alpha channel information for later. Uh, and then on the target fire control, uh, just um, keep it as it is and click OK. And now click on the render button. It is now uh, generating all of the 284 frames uh, and processing them. So now it's finished, uh, I'm going to do a comparison um, with some more additional lighting to make it look better. So if we draw a plane along the floor or along the desk uh, and then add a standard light, skylight and select anywhere in the scene, select cast shadows and then change the rays per sample down to 5. Uh, you can increase this but it takes longer to render per frame but uh, you'll get the idea. Uh, so you press M to open up the material editor and then on where it says standard material choose that and change it to matte shadow and then drag the matte shadow onto your plane that you've just selected and that will turn a, a grey shadowy colour. Um, there you go. This time we'll do the same again. So rendering, render setup. Uh, this time, same again, active sequence uh, 1280 by 720. And then we'll change it in a new folder. Shadows.tda save and render. So once you've um, rendered out the scene, um, basically shows you import them into Adobe After Effects. Um, got the original movie uh, that I shot with and then I've rendered out the initial columns thing uh, and that's tracked, tracked through and also the additional one with the shadows and then you can obviously see the how much nicer it looks with the um, matte shadow on the ground plane any questions, uh, just put a comment on the bottom of my blog and I'll uh, get back to you. Okay, bye. Here is a few examples of some of the ones I've run through Matchmover and created some simple animations here in 3D Studio Max uh, or some static meshes to prove the concept of uh, manual tracking.